Do 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 do. Yes, it is Garage Band Weekly here on Studio Live today, and yes, you might not see it at first glance, but there's been some changes. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But on today's show, it's all about Band Lab. We're looking at a Garage Band alternative by the name of Band Lab. We have uh, showed it before. Uh, it is uh, very cool, and I think you're going to uh, find some interesting things even if you're not a complete convert because i'm not but i like to use band lab for different things it's like uh, band lab is like if you took facebook and x <laughs> and soundcloud and slaps.com and just smooshed them all together and, and grabbed a daw grab garage band as well so you can create music in it you can share music you can collaborate you can communicate you can master kate Okay, have eat, uh, uh, maybe let's uh, say good day to the folks who are here live. Save me, folks. Uh, hello to uh, to Thomas Christ. Good day to uh, Mark, hey, Emilio, John Swanson is here. Oh, thank you for being here. Andy has to go bowling. I love it. Man, I miss bowling. I used to be I used to be a bowler. Um, yeah, but I wasn't I wasn't quite good enough to break through into the professional bowling circuit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for Eamon for being here. Uh, G'day Future Phoenix. Hello Al Davis Music. Yeah, my, my setup here is a little bit different because I've got Band Lab in my big screen in front of me and I've got you folks over here to the side. So things are going to be a little bit different here just while I get the studio kind of reconfigured because um, I guess we'll jump straight into it. The news and notes are that uh, I've been trialing a couple of Apple products for a while. This is kind of GarageBand adjacent, GarageBand related, but I've been using the Apple Studio display uh, because Apple were kind enough to give it to me to borrow for a year, and I had to give it back. And it's in the box over there. It's waiting to be picked up by the courier, and uh, it's a little bit sad because I've gone back, and it's one of those things where you don't notice the quality of something until you swap it out to something else. So I was using the 28 inch Apple studio display and I'm like, yes, this is overpriced at like $1,700 Australian. I love it, but I'm unlikely to buy it, but I've used it for a year now and I've swapped back to an LG 32 inch um, uh, 1080p monitor and going from like a 6K monitor down to a 1080p monitor, it's very different. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And uh, I, don't, I, don't, I feel for Pete's, I feel for Studio Live today's bank balance because um, yeah, probably a new monitor in my future. Anyway, uh, and the other thing is that I've been testing out the MacBook Pro, which I mean, I use my, I use my Mac M1 here in the studio 90% of the time, but having a laptop, a Mac laptop, has kind of changed my world as well. So I've kind of, again, become accustomed. I've become accustomed to your fat. No, become accustomed to using a MacBook for on the go and when I'm in the kitchen and when I'm doing early morning stuff. And the iPad's good and the desktop's good, but the MacBook was just somewhere in between. So again, Apple have done exactly what they what they they should have, which is they've given it to me to try, and now I've tried both of these things, and now I love them, and now I'm going to go and buy them. So there you go. <laughs> it is. It's, it goes. It's. I it's, know. Oh get out the little tiny violin for poor John, who only gets to borrow amazing gear for a year and doesn't have to pay for it, but now he does. So uh, yes, we'll 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 get out there and uh, and have a look at that. And I also need to uh, suddenly because um. I had a lot of storage on the MacBook Pro, so I was kind of using it as as my SSD, as my backup storage. So uh, let's just say Pete also has to go out today and buy a four terabyte SSD to uh, copy over all of his data files onto. But again, don't cry for me, Argentina. Uh, hello to Caius. Uh, thanks for all your content. Well, thank you. Thank you for, for, for being here and thank you for the kind words. I appreciate you as well. Uh, this is GarageBand Weekly. There's a couple of things that you can do if you want to if you want to support me and support the channel and help me uh, pay for a new monitor or whatever it happens to be. Uh, and that is all over here at GarageBand FAQ. 
All you need to do is go to studiolive.com slash garageband. There it is there. It's my GarageBand iOS FAQ. You can check out my details about Logic Pro for iPad, which is uh, Apple's brand new. Well, been out a couple of months now, but their newest DAW for iOS. You can kickstart your GarageBand learning for just $10 bucks there. And you can check out all the freebies. I've got uh, five different playlists there of getting started with GarageBand. So over 2,000 videos right here on the channel all about creating on your mobile device using GarageBand. So jump on in there and uh, check out all of the gear over on the website. The other piece of news I have for you is something that we've been talking about, and that is Song Chamber. Yes, it's just around the corner. It's like Goldmark. Uh, that'll mean nothing for everyone but maybe Jade. Goldmark, just around the corner. Uh, Song Chamber 2023 is kicking off on September the 1st. In fact, there's a launch party that because I'm here in the future, it'll actually be earlier than that. And uh, I've got a couple of special guests coming along to join me. We'll be talking about past song timbers, playing a couple of tracks from our song timbers of yesterday and yesteryear, and uh, telling you about how you can get involved. And if you're not familiar with song timber, Go over there, studiolivetoday.com slash songtember. Join the Facebook group, join the Discord, follow us on all the places. I need to remove that one. That doesn't exist anymore, so I'm going to have to remove the old uh, the old Twitter. Uh, but there's all the information. We've got our friends of Songtember there who are creating and the rules there as well. Now, this isn't a GarageBand-specific thing. You don't have to use GarageBand. You can use any DAW, any genre, any type of music, whatever you want to do. The idea, the goal, the aim, the passion of this is to get as many folks producing as much music as possible. So for those that haven't done this sort of thing before, maybe you've always wanted to finish a song, but you've never had the guts and the courage to get through it, join us because that's the whole point of it. Get the whole community together, hang out as a community, and encourage and motivate each other. No prizes, no competition, no best, no worst, just completion, just getting stuff done, and that is what it is all about. If you do have questions as we go through the show, by the way, just chuck a cue in front of your comment, and uh, I'll definitely try and answer as we can go. Clayton Von Kluge, no, we're not pre-recorded, and I can ask the, answer your question. Uh, so Covenant's ready. I just got here. What can I do about latency on BandLab? Well, yeah, there is actually a latency check, which I've noticed. So we're going to dive into BandLab, and I'll, I'll pre-warn you by saying I'm completely unprepared for this show. I just wanted to jump in and play with BandLab for a little bit and show you a couple of things that have been added. They've improved their auto pitch. They've um, they, There's the ability, they've always had this, but they've improved the ability to open other projects and to fork things. I'll show you a cool fork that a, a, an artist that you'd be familiar with. If you watch Your Music Live, you'll know this artist. They have forked me. Yes, I've been forked, and uh, you'll find out about that in a moment. So we'll go into that in just a jiffy. But uh, yes, we are. We are live, and we are talking about it. And uh, I'll have a look, because like, like I said, I did notice that there was a little a little latency button there in BandLab, so we'll play with that. We'll give it a little fiddle and have a play <laughs> in just a moment. Uh, hello to Gary Hubs. Uh, thank you for being here as well. And um, hello to uh, Kay Kaya. Uh, sorry, my, my pronunciation is always really bad with this stuff. Uh, Kai Puffer Shal uh, says, I've been diving deep into GarageBand iOS and a lot of my producer friends are suggesting in investing in a home studio and upgrading my door. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll tackle this now before we dive into BandLab. Uh, so my thoughts on that are that it really doesn't matter. Now, your friends may be using something else. So let's just say your friends are producing Firebeats on FL Studio, and that's the, what their workflow is best for. Or they're using Ableton Live because that's what their workflow is best for. And then they're like, oh, don't use GarageBand. GarageBand sucks. Well, GarageBand doesn't suck. Neither does Ableton Live and neither does FL Studio. In fact, nothing actually sucks. It's just whatever works for you and your workflow. Now, the thing about it is that quality, people get very confused with this. They think that the quality is based on the DAW you use. So if you use Pro Tools, your quality is up here. If you use GarageBand, your quality is down here. But realistically, they're both digital audio. They're both just capturing ones and zeros and converting it to analog audio. So there really is no difference based on what actual platform you're recording to. But if you find that all the tools 
pun intended, you get in Pro Tools are a lot better than GarageBand and you're utilizing all of them, then great, use Pro Tools. Same with Ableton, same with FL Studio, whatever you're using. And same with BandLab, like people are creating amazing stuff in BandLab. It has its limitations, but it has its advantages around convenience as well. And at the end of the day, every single platform is pretty much at a minimum of 44.1 kilohertz and 16-bit or usually 24-bit or even 32-bit sound. So the only real difference is GarageBand itself only supports 44.1 kilohertz and 24-bit audio. If you really desperately want to do 96 kilohertz or 192 kilohertz or 32-bit floating point audio, then yeah, you'll need another platform. I don't know anyone that does that. And I don't know any platform that supports that. So if you're streaming to Spotify and Apple Music and all these places, they don't support that high quality. Yet, some do. Tidal, Deezer, I think they have these high high fidelity sounds. But for the most part, a lot of that is people who use something and have a lot of what we call sunk cost bias. They've set up their studio and they've set up their production around a particular piece of software or a bunch of hardware. So they it's in their best interest to convince other people to use it too because that kind of validates them and their time and their expense. So hopefully that just gives you a bit of my view and look, your view might vary. Other people's view might vary and that's the great thing about uh, about the world, about the world of production and the world of, of um, music is that you can do, do what you want to do, be what you want to be, yeah. Uh, Rowan says, uh, I'm interested to learn more about BandLab. Would it be useful for my band? Uh, we have a Logic user who does our mixes, so I don't know whether BandLab could, would add anything. We'll dive in and I'll show you some of the things in a moment. It's not necessarily that it will... I mean, I think it will add some things. I've, I've done some experimenting in the last week and I see some real advantages here, especially for folks collaborating and working on things within bands, just to, to throw ideas in there because unlike everything else where you have to actually grab your projects. So say you're working on a project in Logic Pro, what you could actually do is say you've got a band member that wants to, to try a guitar solo or try some drums. Instead of you having to, you know, zip up that project and send it and put it onto a storage and then or put it onto the cloud and then they open it and they update it and they change it. If you throw it up into BandLab, Blair, throw it up into BandLab, you can set it as either private or public. So you can set it as a private project. You can give them access to it. They can jump in directly into that project in BandLab, hook up their guitar, play in their solo, and then say, right, done. They save in their revision. You go and open it, and there it is. And you can see their guitar solo. You can then download that stem and throw it back into Logic. So I think that there are advantages of doing these sort of things. So we'll we'll definitely play around with it because, look, I'm, I'm not convinced. And full disclosure... BandLab have been a sponsor of this channel in the past. They are currently not sponsoring this show or any shows or any videos here on the channel, but they have sponsored videos in the past. And uh, I am now part of the BandLab uh, Amplify program. So I'm, I'm now um, a, what is a, like the blue check mark of BandLab? So uh, if you go onto BandLab, which we'll do in a moment, and take a look at me. In fact, I can show you it right now. If you jump over here to BandLab, uh, you can see there that I have the little blue tick next to my name, which just means that. I am, uh, I am who I am. I am who I say I am, and I'm, uh, I'm authorized to, as a real person with BandLab. I did see another question there do, 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 from Al Davis. Have you ever written a song which people say sounds like something else uh, unintentionally, and have you gone back to re-record parts to make it sound less familiar? Great question. And look, let's just flow with the questions here because, um, yeah, we, we've got we've got time. We've got time. I did say I was going to reduce this show from an hour to half an hour. We'll probably hang out for an hour today. But, uh, yeah, if you've got questions, that that's the most important part for, for you folks in the community. Uh, my advice on this is that my response to this, whenever people ask me this, they're like, oh, man, I just wrote a song and it sounds just like blah. Or someone said to me, oh, that sounds just like blah. The thing is, in the Western scale, there are 12 notes, 12 semitones between your middle C and your high C. So there's very little that you can do that won't sound like something else. And the more music that is produced in history, and we are producing, like in 2023, more songs will be produced than any other year in history. And that has happened year on year for about the last 20 years. The home recording revolution is real and more people are producing and releasing more music than ever before. It's quite, it's quite difficult to get any traction for people to listen to your music. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It's and swings and roundabouts but what's come along with that is that everything sounds like something yeah everything sounds like something that you've probably heard before so in my personal opinion i don't think it's worth worrying about 
when you sound like something else, unless you have completely plagiarized. I'm looking at you, Vanilla Ice. Unless you're like, dun, 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 or you're actually ripping samples and remixing, which is its own art form in itself. But if you've just got a chord progression that it's a one, four, five, seven, one, four, five, seven, guess what? There's probably a hundred thousand songs in histories that have used that exact same chord progression. Or even if your your melody is one, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, yeah, again, um, isn't that that da -da 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 that dueling banjos? Yeah. So I don't worry about it so much. I I leave it. I let it breathe. I don't think I don't think changing it is worthwhile. Like I say, unless it's so close, unless it's absolute plagiarism and you're just remaking another song. I don't think I don't think I've ever done that. I've definitely so there's a song I I, I play um, which sounds just like the EMF song Unbelievable, and every time I sing it now that song sticks in my head. And my wife says it sounds just like that, and I'm like, yeah, but everything sounds just like everything, doesn't it? So don't worry so much about it. Would be would be my view. Uh, Clayton Von Clue says latency on my audio interfaces going into BandLab is actually my only major gripe about it. The only thing. All right, cool. Well, we'll we'll have a little play around with it uh, in just a jiffy. Hello, Treatment in Progress. We played a Treatment in Progress track on Your Music Live yesterday. It was very very cool. So uh, good job. A dream update for BandLab would be VST support. Yeah, yeah, and we'll we'll, we'll dive into that because it is. It's only you can only use the built-in plugins, the built-in sounds in BandLab. There are no additional uh, AU or AUV3 or ability to use external VSTs. Uh, question here is: I have an iRig Stream Mic Pro and the iRig Keys IO. What other hardware do you think would benefit my GarageBand iOS setup? To be honest, if you got the iRig Stream Mic. You've all, unless you're plugging in guitars or you want to plug in other instruments, because the stream mic's good for recording your voice or recording any real life instruments, and the iRig keys are good, I think that's a good setup. If you're recording mainly vocal stuff and then mainly electronic or recording keyboard sounds in using the iRig keys, that's pretty good. The The only thing is that the iRig Stream Pro um, actually, I think it. I think it is twenty-four bit uh, from memory. I think uh, it, it records at twenty-four bit. So it, the uh, what a USB microphone has is it's like an audio interface and a microphone all in one. So I guess the what I would look to for the future is you may want to upgrade to a standalone audio interface and a separate microphone. And that way you could actually add more microphones so you could try different types of microphones. So uh, that's probably the only thing uh, that I would say for your next step would be to do something like that. Outside of that, you're looking at things like monitor speakers so that you can mix like in real sound. You don't have to use headphones. A good set of monitor headphones is always a good investment for your home studio as well. So if you're using GarageBand iOS, in fact, I've got whole videos here. If you go to the gear guide, studiolivetoday.com slash gear, uh, this one over here, studiolivetoday.com slash gear. I've got a breakdown of my mobile recording setup that has my iPad and then everything that I use. So powered USB hubs, audio interfaces, microphones, all of the kit that I use is over at the gear guide. So feel free to jump on over there and take a look. It'll help you out. All righty. Uh, tell me the difference between the song. Yeah, if, if exactly. If people can tell the difference between the songs, you're good. That's good enough. I think uh, you don't need much more than that. Uh, the key, oh yeah, so if you've got the iRig keys that have the quarter inch combo jack, then you're absolutely golden because then you can plug in guitars or, or external keyboards or whatever you want directly to that. And uh, yes, if you would like to uh, hit the like button as Clayton Von Kluge suggests, then feel free to do that. And now I think it's time. The time has come. Let's jump in to, uh, to Band Lab and take a bit of a look. If you do have questions as we go through, again, we, we keep it pretty casual on this show, so feel free to just throw a cue in front of any questions that you may have as we're going on through. Let me uh, let me zoom in on this uh, to give you a, a larger view of BandLab. So, as I mentioned up front, uh, this is going to be a bit more of an introduction to BandLab as opposed to really you know diving into all the features of BandLab, but you'll get a bit of an idea of what it can do as well. So, Yes, it looks like a social media platform. You've got your feed, you've got Explore tab, you've got services, you've got your library where you store your music. You can create a new song up the top here. You can see all of the things that are going to pop in here. People to follow, so you can jump in here, say Jerome, who's boosted there. I just want to follow Jerome. I can do that really quickly there. Why not? And then down the middle here, you've got either your following. So these are people that I'm following that are doing various different things. Or you've got your For You tab. 
which is similar to other platforms where there'll just be random stuff in here. There's videos, so people can post videos. There's their songs that are directly here in BandLab. And there's two different ways you can share music in BandLab. You can just share it as a song, which is similar to what you do in SoundCloud, or you can share it and enable it to be forked. Yeah? You can fork things. So I'll, uh, I'll show you that in a moment. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll follow this little rosé. And uh, why don't we fork this? Uh, we'll, we'll, should we do it right now? It's a rock song. It's called Used To Be. Uh, I, I wonder if I can get in trouble with copyright for this uh, for doing this on a live stream. Uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll throw caution to the wind. So Lil Rosé, uh, uh, apologies. If, if, you, if you want, we can, we can come back and mute and cut out this section of the live stream. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'll show you how we can do this with a fork. In fact, I'll, I'll, um, I'll save this. I'll add this song to my playlist. So I've got this, uh, this playlist I've just set up which is called Forkable. <laughs> so I'm going to add another post to my Forkable playlist so that we can come back and check that one out uh, at a later stage. So it's it's a social media platform and you're thinking, so what? I've got Facebook, I've got X, I've got, uh, so I've got all these other places where I can do these sort of things. I don't need another place where I'm following and being followed. But the difference with BandLab is that you've also got the ability to create music. So as soon as we hit this Create button here in the top right corner, hit the project button, it's going to hopefully not crash my stream this time, and it's going to open up a brand new project here, and we can start creating a track. So we can bring in uh, voice recordings, we can record instruments, MIDI, MIDI instruments, we've got drum machine, sampler, guitar, and bass. If we plug those in, we can import audio and MIDI, and we've got BandLab Sounds. And BandLab Sounds is pretty next level because there's pack after pack of amazing sounds here in, in BandLab with a whole bunch of different genres that can get you started and they're royalty free so you can use these things in your tracks which is kind of cool uh, let's just do a quick search here just to get something if we go funky everything's funky you can funky accordion okay i mean come on we as if we can't put some funky accordion in here so uh let's just find a random accordion they're all minor oh it's all minor all right we'll, we'll go with an a minor i like an a minor let's uh, have a listen to this funky accordion sound I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. We hit pause on that one. So we can bring in these sounds by just dragging and dropping them. Got to get my drag action going on here. Dragging and dropping them straight here onto a project. Uh, it'll set the project key if we wanted to do that. So we'll go, yep, set it. That'll do you. So it's actually going to set both the tempo. So it's going to match the tempo here and it's going to set it. So I set the tempo of my project to 80 BPM. It set it to A minor. We're ready to go away. Turn our metronome on. Now, are we going to be able to create a project with this? I don't know. Why did I choose accordion? Anyway, but there's drum bass. There's a whole bunch of other things in here. So you can create using that sort of thing as well. You can also record your own track. So if we add a track, you can go voice and audio. I've got a microphone plugged in here. As you can, ba, 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 you can see there. We can turn on monitoring and we can record along using a microphone. our voice in there and we can play back. And of course I wasn't, uh, oh, turn that monitoring off. I've got the monitoring going on there. Of course it's going to pick up quite a lot of background in there because I'm not using headphones, which is what I would suggest. There's a pretty darn good auto-tune in here. And I just did a video on this, actually. I did a short video about the auto-tune in here. It's actually way better than GarageBand or even Logic Pro's auto-tune because you've got the ability to dial in how much you want. And you can even use either chromatic scale here or you can actually say, let's put it into the A minor scale to actually match our project. So let's uh, T-paint it up and take a listen to my accordion magic. I don't know why. I chose the accordion for this song. 
<laughs> yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not the right choice of that. But yeah, you can see how you can utilize all of these. And it's it's basically, here's, here's what it is. If you want to compare it to GarageBand, it's very similar to GarageBand in terms of you can record, you can use all of the different um, inputs that you have on your audio interface. You can use a drum machine, you can use a sampler, you can add in your own sounds, you can import sounds, you can export sounds, you can import MIDI. It basically is like GarageBand iOS. Limitations though is... As, uh, as Nova Cascade mentioned before, even though you can add effects here, you're ab actually limited to the effects that you have here in BandLab. So there are quite a few of them. You have quite a few good effects in here. You've got a bunch of different, uh, different dynamics and distortion and modulation and pitch shifting and reverb and tone and delay and all the rest of it, graphic EQ. So there's a lot to play around with. But if you've got a favorite plugin or a favorite external instrument that's an AUV3 that you like to use and you want to use it in BandLab, you SOL, which as we say, they're sort of out of luck. So you can't do that. But it does have things you can do. For instance, you can publish, as we see up here, you can publish this so that other people can jump in and actually play around with your track, which is pretty cool. You can invite other people to be part of your track. You've got the ability to use different time signatures. As you can see here, you've got a lot more time signature flexibility than you do in GarageBand. You do have, uh, I think that's the latency button, which I said we'd play around with, but I can't seem to turn on. So I don't know if that's just because we don't have uh, this set to record. No, not sure. Not sure how we do that. Uh, but the other thing is you've got MIDI mapping. So that's something that's uh, lacking in not only uh, GarageBand, but not that great in Logic Pro either. So you can actually map your MIDI. If you're using MIDI keyboards or MIDI drum pads or MIDI devices, you can map your MIDI in there. So it is a full-featured digital audio workstation. And you'll have noticed, if you're, if you're looking at me popping up these little buttons down the bottom here, it works in a similar way to what Logic Pro does. Whether you're using the mobile version or the uh, the desktop version, it does it in a modular way. So everything pops up here and uh, has the ability to use it. And I probably buried the lead here, but there's two things that you need to keep in mind about this. Number one is you don't need to download any software because you use it in your browser. I'm using it in Firefox here. You can use it in Chrome. You can use it in whatever Explorer is called now, Edge, I guess. You can use it in DuckDuckGo browser. Whatever you use, you can use it there. And uh, to answer many vibes, it is free. It is free. Yes, 100% free. Free to use. What's the catch? <laughs> but wait, there's more. What's the catch? Uh, yeah, th there really isn't any catch. Like any platform, like any software platform or service, a SaaS software as a service, y you're adding your data to it. So just like any other social media platform, you're adding in your data. So you are sharing data and information with BandLab. There are ways that you can actually monetize. So you would have seen when we looked at it before, there was someone who'd boosted one of their projects so that more people will see it. You can actually sign up as a member. Do we need to save this? No, we don't need to save that project. You can sign up as a member. Uh, if you start sharing and start doing streams and live streams, because you can all do all that through, through here as well, you can actually get paid. So there is ways, there's ways to donate to people and there's ways to get paid through the platform. So there are monetization options, but BandLab, the company BandLab, uh, they have a lot of different things that they do outside of just um, outside of just BandLab, this version and the BandLab mobile version. So yeah, it, it, it is pretty cool. Every time I do this, I do get that question of like, what's the catch? Like, there's got to be something here that, uh, that, that it does, that it doesn't do. And I guess the, the catches uh, are that it is it is based in your browser so you do have to accept that you're going to be sitting in your browser most of the time uh, which can be it, it can be a little clunky as I mentioned before when I did a test run a few days ago it did because the, the audio mostly because I was live streaming it was trying to share the audio and it got into a weird loop and it, it crashed out but when I'm not live streaming I haven't had any issues with, with the audio because anything that uses a browser the browser audio is getting a lot better it's not as good as a native app, to be very honest, but it's getting a lot, lot better. And on your mobile device, which we'll jump in and take a look at in a moment, yes, yeah, same sort of deal. The other real big advantage of this is that it's um, cross-platform. So completely, completely cross-platform, meaning that if you are collaborating with folks, if they're using an iPhone, if they're using an iPad, if they're using an Android tablet, if they're using an Android phone, if they're using a Mac, if they're using a PC, 
it's available on all of those platforms. So you can actually just jump between platforms and you can do things like, I should have saved that in because I could have opened it up. You can do things like make changes on your desktop version, close it, walk out, open it. It's all stored in the cloud. You don't have to worry about local storage, all stored in the cloud. You then open it on your phone and you can keep playing around with it. You've got an idea while you're walking around. And this is why I wanted to get back into Band Lab for, for Songtember because what I do at the start of Songtember, our Song in a Month challenge, is I start projects and then as I get ideas, usually while I'm out walking around, I'll just record little bits and pieces and I've recorded them into GarageBand on my phone and then bring them back in here to the studio, open them up on the GarageBand for iPad and then start building on them. So I think this time around, BandLab might be a good option for that because I can be recording while I'm out and about just with my earbuds in and recording little ideas and little snippets, bring it back in here, have it here in the studio. And then when I'm ready to actually record, I can either export those stems out of BandLab and lab import them into logic pro if i've got a really good take or more likely bring it over export the whole project from band lab bring it into logic pro and then do my actual tracking my actual recording of the the, the guitars and the, the bass and the vocals and whatever i'm recording directly into uh, logic pro we'll see we'll see how we go with that uh, i've got a few more questions here oh hello by the way to dark leela yeah put a couple of my backing traps and see if i can get some awesome remixes and versions Hold that thought. I'm going to show you someone who has remixed or, and done a new version of one of my songs in just a jiffy because I wanted to do exactly the same thing. I thought I'll throw some stems up there and I'll see if anyone does a, takes a nibble. So there you go. Uh, yeah, and that, that, that's the thing. They, they don't want a lot. The, the amount of data that they ask you for is pretty limited. Yeah, there's advantages to updating and, and adding to your profile and whatnot, but there's not a whole lot, not a whole lot that you need to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I think it's more that the band lab have other things that they do and uh, that they are, um, they are affiliated. The, the, the one thing you will notice is that when you're using it, you'll have uh, opportunities pop up because they are affiliated with Reverb Nation, which you may be familiar with, which is another kind of online music sharing platform. So yeah, that I'm sure that there's a lot of behind the scenes deals that, that go on that I are way above my pay grade uh, in terms of how they <laughs> how they stay afloat and how they monetize things. Can you import waves into Band Lab? You sure can. So uh, in fact, I'll I'll, I'll show you that. Uh, should we go back to the desktop version? And uh, let, let, let's do that. Let's, let's create something a little better in the desktop version, shall we? And then we'll move it over uh, to the, 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 the mobile version. So if we come in here and we do a new project, we'll just do the same thing again. This time, uh, let's, let's instead, let's bring in a drum machine. And uh, we'll just, we want an 808. We want something interesting. We'll go the drum kits. Uh, we'll, let's use a blues drum kit, shall we? Yeah, blues drum kit uh, set up here, and let's just record in. So, oh, record function not available. Why don't we have? Oh, we're not playing with that. All right. Uh, clearly, it's been a long time since I've used the drum machine here, but maybe I need to use. Oh no, there we go. It just puts it in there. And then changes it up. So let's just uh, add in another track here. Oh, let's, in fact, we'll we'll bring in our own sound. So the way that we do that is to add track and uh, da, 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 voice and audio. Uh, actually, no. How do we do it? Now, now I'm testing myself. You can do it where, where the band lab sounds are here. My sounds. Here we go. My sounds. And am I making this up? Can we not actually? Can we not actually import? I thought I was. I was sure we could. Um, I'm going to have to take that on notice because I was sure that there was a way to import your own sounds. But now I'm being proven. Maybe that's not the case. You can definitely record in your own sounds. Can you just drag them in? Let's uh, let's go and find a wave file. Uh, this is <laughs> this is a project I'm working on next week, next week's show. But we'll uh, we'll see if we can just drag this in. We'll see if this will actually work. Oh man, I'm having issues with my uh, trackpad at the moment. I'll I'll bring in my project instead. No, uh, it won't. Won't let me drag. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here in um. 
here in um, the Mac, but sometimes I just completely lose my dragon ability. All right, I'll, we'll have to pause on that one. I thought you could. I'll, I'll have to do some more investigation and let you know if we can. <laughs> but uh, we'll leave this as just this drum beat here. We'll, we'll close out this time, and this time we will actually save it. Yes, let's save this, and we'll call it just drum machine or something, just so that I can show you how quickly we can throw this from one place to another. So there it is. It creates a new project, processes it, and in just a jiffy, it'll pop up and be ready for us to utilize. There it is. If we go to the project details here, we can uh, rename it, rename it to drum machine. And then we can utilize this when we open up in the in the mobile version. So let's just jump over quickly to the mobile version. I'll just see if we have any other comments or questions that have come on through. Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe I could copy and paste. I'll, 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 play, I'll play back around with that in a sec. Uh, we come on over here. So this is the mobile version of BandLab. So it's very, very similar, but it's more in like a, a feed. Like you jump in there and you've got your trending feed, you've got your following. And to be honest, it's probably more designed to work on phone as opposed to iPad or at least iPad in a portrait mode. Because you can see here, it's kind of right down the middle there. But once you actually jump into the music here, it's uh, it's very similar to what you have there. So if we come in here, oh, now as we just need to refresh that. There it is. We've refreshed it. So to refresh on these, by the way, just drag down like everything else to refresh, drag down, release. It's going to refresh. So here's that drum machine project that we just worked on. And to me, this is one of the biggest advantages and one of the things that I'm looking forward to playing around with here because I can now open this in the studio right here on my iPad. And just like that and just like magic, if we hit play and I've got my audio set up correctly. And now I'm out and about, I'm away from the studio, I'm on the go and I'm like, oh, I've got a bit of an idea here. Let's just grab a virtual instrument and uh, throw some ideas. So let's go with this boom bass. Cool. So we'll tap the bass there. And now we've got... We want to get a bit of an idea here. So Stop that. We will go back to the start of the track by tapping over here. By the way, I should show you where I'm tapping. Tap, tap. We're at the start of the track here. We're going to hit the record button. Stop that. And we've recorded in our little idea for a drum part. So now if we just X out of that little bit, and you'll notice here on the mobile version, it opens it up over your whole screen. So you don't kind of have the modular, you've still got availability of everything. So over here on the left, you've got your mixer, so you can use your mutes, your solos, your, your effects and your volumes. And then when you actually open things up, at the top here, your editor window, uh, your lyrics, sorry, your lyrics and notes window there, your settings section there, but then when you actually do something, it will change the, the view. So if we tap here and we go, all right, we want to edit on this one. We hit the edit button over here. It'll open up the note editor. And then you've got a MIDI note editor here that does a pretty good job. So for instance, if we just wanted to select all these and we actually want these to start right at the start of our project like that, we can do that. And then just hit the X button at the top here. And then we've got an idea for how this is going to sound of our whole project, just grab the playhead, move it to the side, hit play. All right, want to loop that, so we'll just tap it and hit the loop button. There. Like most things, including uh, Apple's own GarageBand, I have to use my finger because it doesn't really like me using the, <laughs> the, the mouse, the cursor here. Sometimes when you tap something with the cursor, if you move it to try and press a button, the buttons go away. So that's that's an iOS thing. Hopefully iPadOS 17 will improve some of that features. But um, yeah, we've got, got ourselves a little bit of a groove here. Uh, let's let's add in something else, shall we? Let's um, hit the plus button there. And like we've got a looper in here, by the way, which is different. So you, you can easily make complete tracks using the looper section. You've got a sampler in here. Let's use a sampler. Because uh, this could be, so what we do with the sampler is we just tap and hold to record into a section. Boo. 
Oh, we're, we're plugged into the wrong thing. Hang on. <laughs> I was going to use this. Maybe we'll use that back on the uh, back on the desktop because my microphone is plugged into the desktop. But you can see there, you can set it. It's like Koala Sampler. You can actually set yourself up an easy sampler with multiple samples, which, you know, kind of crushes GarageBand's sampler a little bit. We'll grab another virtual instrument instead. Let's uh, go at the top here. Let's see what guitar options we have here. Because uh, like most DAWs, yeah, don't exactly have the best guitars. But we do have a ukulele. That's something that's missing. Let's uh, let's play this uke. Cool. So we hit the ukulele. And uh, you'll notice there that it's actually downloading it. Have you, did you notice that? Like when we play it, so we'll play the twang guitar here. So it doesn't take up a bunch of space because it keeps all these in the clouds until you want to use them. And then when you want to use them, it just downloads them. And then you can actually select them and bring them into your project. So... So let's um, hit record and record something in here. <laughs> I don't mind that. All right, so we've recorded in another little part there. We just hit the X button here and it'll take us back out here. And you can see, you can just start building your track out just like you would in any other DAW. But the benefit is that we want to switch now. Let's switch ourselves up over. We'll exit out there. We're going to save this one. So that's going to save that project. And you can see here, version control. Didn't I tell you that there were thing in here that uh, GarageBand didn't do? Version control, look at that. There's the first version, here's the second version. And every time we make a major update, it actually saves a version into the cloud automatically without me doing a single thing. So to me, uh, that that's pretty cool. That's something that I would love to see in GarageBand and even in Logic Pro to give you automated version control. So uh, let's let's jump back over here to the desktop now. <laughs> Pete the Pied Piper. Uh, yeah, thank you, Leela. Yeah, did we have questions about your music live? Yes, you can submit your own tunes to be considered in your music live. Yeah, exactly. The the sampler is just like Koala Sampler and works really well, uh, in my opinion. <coughs> Excuse me. My apologies. Frog in my throat there. Uh, yeah, the player looks a lot like SoundCloud or Slaps.com, uh, pretty much. All right. If you, uh, if you have any questions as we go through, do let me know. Let's uh, let's jump back in here because um, you would have seen when we went to my library here, you've got the ability to do a bunch of things in here. So these are all my projects, all projects. So these are the, the projects that we've been working on. We have my projects, which are ones that I've actually started. We have collaborations here. <coughs> and when we first started using Bad Lab, you'll see here I was collaborating with Brad Example with Thomas Christ. So we actually set that up uh, last year when we started using uh, Bad Lab for the first time, which was cool. Uh, my liked music, which is all the, the tracks that I've actually liked in here, including my own, which is very self-serving, uh, and uh, your deleted projects as well. So it'll even keep stuff you've deleted for, I think, 30 days, so you can go back in and restore those. But again, just to show you the power of this stuff, I've been out and about, I've come back here, I'm going to open this drum machine project. You can see the orange line at the top there. It's going to build it up here. There it is, ready to go. So I can hit the studio button. And it'll open it back up here on the on the desktop. So now, when we hit the space bar here, and what you're noticing is that uh, yeah, we've got some sort of problems here. Like we might want to actually uh, might want to quantize this. So if we come in here, we can tap it, tap it double tap it and we've got the ability to use quantization if I can remember where it is down here quantize uh, we'll select it select all those notes and we'll go let's go eighth note quantization eighth note hit it now that should <laughs> uh, 
there is a little bit of latency in there. You can you can hear it, can't you? You can hear that it's coming in just a little bit early. So these are some of the little quirks and things that you'll need to play around with and get used to. I'm not saying it's perfect. There's definitely room for improvement in terms of the, the audio because, again, you're using the audio right here from your browser, which is not going to be the absolute best quality and the, the easiest to, to sync up and to line up. So, yeah, there'll be some experimentation playing around with. That's why I don't think... Yet, I don't think BandLab is just going to be your choice of what you use end-to-end -end for your entire project. But in terms of a, a cool sketch pad and an idea for being able to capture things, pretty darn cool. Let's uh, jump out of there. So we'll close this one. And yeah, yeah, we'll save it. We'll save that quantization that we did. So that'll again save it and make sure that there's a new version there again because we've got that version control built right in here. What I did, so I'll, I'll take you through something that I've already set up here. So if we go back to my library, I've actually set this project and you can go to this project. So if you sign up to BandLab for free, again, you can uh, actually go to this project. You can see eight people have liked it and see how there's this one under inspired projects. That's because what I did is I went in here to project details and I actually set this one up to be forkable. So when I first set up this project, I made sure that people could actually fork it. And that means that people can actually use this, grab my original project and then create something of their own. So if you've ever wanted to put, your, as Leela said earlier, to put your stuff out there and then just see if someone actually wants to go in and just play with it then that's what you can do. So we are going to uh, do this. I'll show you this forked project that someone has forked, and then I will, um, I will, uh, I'll attempt to fork someone else's project. <laughs> so if we jump into this project, this anxiety project, um, yeah, in fact, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll share it here because uh, sharing is really easy from here. You just hit this big share button. We go share or embed, and we copy that. So I'm going to throw this right here into the um, chat. So for those that are here live, you can play along at home. You can go and actually check out this project yourself right now. But what you can do is that we can just hit the play button. So if people just want to listen to the project to start with, it'll play like so. But the cool thing is I've actually not just put the, the mix and the master of this. If we go into studio, I've put in the four original tracks because this was recorded as a four track demo originally. And then I liked it so much, I just used those uh, those four tracks and uh, mixed it together. So these are the raw stems, no effects. I've just exported them from GarageBand. I've imported them directly in, actually I cheated. I opened it in Logic Pro and I exported them as stems without effects. It was really easy to do. So I've brought these in and you can see here are the four tracks. So folks can come in here and they can play around with this and create their own project using these completely at their own discretion. So if we come in here to a section where these are all playing along here, uh, this is the four tracks mixed. But my There's the guitar and just my low vocals. Guitar and some high vocals. Background vocals and me tapping a box. <laughs> my lead vocals. So if anyone wanted to start playing with this, they can. So you can start adding you effects, for instance. Say you never get away from me. You Let's, might uh, as well just settle in and deal. Watch we go with Easy M Octiva. Can you say you're stuck with me forever. This will always be the way you're gonna feel. That's pretty cool. But I don't believe Sky you. Sound. I can Ambient feel. Rocker. Carry that's kind of cool. And I realize now I actually like that. That's cool. So yeah, you got a de on there, you got echo, you got delay. So even though you got to use the built-in plugins, there's some pretty bloody good plugins in there to play around with. So you can you can do that, and folks could just simply remix it if they wanted to, throw in some effects, make it completely have their own. But the cool thing is that we've already had someone do this. And if you're a YML, we won't save that. If you're a YML viewer, you'll know this band that has actually uh, forked my project because it's the drag gurus, for goodness sake. Yeah. <laughs> 
So the drag gurus uh, grabbed this original project and they created their own projects. And look, I'm, I'm sure this is probably coming our way for your music live. But uh, if you if you want to get a sneak peek here, let's take a listen to this one because they've grabbed those original four uh, tracks and they've added to it and they've made it their own. And uh, well, can we open it up? We'll open it up uh, in big end here. Uh, it, it's pretty darn awesome. So I'm going to turn myself down and uh, give you a little play of this. It's uh, it's pretty darn cool. drag gurus put that together a few days ago uh, based on those stems which is really cool i love it um and yeah it, it's a, it's the way music should be it should just be yeah, people throwing things together getting ideas just all coming together so this is why i thought the band lab would be a good platform for us to start utilizing more especially as we move into song timber yeah very smooth isn't it i love it i love it <laughs> yeah, it's very, very shoegazy, that, that tune. Uh, but yeah, very cool remix. And the sort of thing that I would never do with that song. And that's the cool thing. Other people can have different ideas and bring it all together. Uh, so yeah, so sign up to BandLab. I highly recommend that you get involved. And I've actually set up one of the things you can do. And I'm still remembering, still working out where everything is here. Uh, I've got to find the, I think it's under Explore here, is it? No, it's under my feed. No, I've got to work out how to uh, navigate my way around here. There's so much going on that I kind of get myself lost a little bit. Um, I'm looking for the groups section because we've set ourselves up a group. Might be under services. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, always the way. I, I found it just before we did it, but I've set ourselves up a song timber. What if I just search for song timber? Because it's got to be pretty, uh, pretty rare. Uh, but, but, but communities, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> there is our song temper community so uh we've only got uh, the five of us in there at the moment but if you would like to join the uh, the song temper community i'm going to once again paste it in there uh there you go so do join up do request to join the song temper community because this is where i'm going to start throwing up again i'm going to start placing positioning uh, a lot of the tracks that i'm going to be working on and uh, i'll put out some of the things and then if people want to add to them and fork them and use my stuff or, or I, I don't know I'm, I've got visions of being able to very quickly and easily add things if, if someone's got a project and they're like John's I just want I just want like one guitar line or to play along to this can you can you give it a go I think it'll be so much easier when we're in band lab and again you can even pull things out of band lab record them in your DAW of choice and then throw them back in here so you can either use it as the actual creation tool or you can use it as a storage locker for all your little creative ideas as well. So jump on over to Band Lab and give it a go. Why don't we finish off by forking something? <laughs> by giving something a fork. Now there was an artist, again, if I can if I can find, is it in my library here? Liked music, it would be in here. I found uh, oh there's Seaside but not docked. They're cool. All right, yeah. I like them. Um I, I thought I'd like the project. I've definitely liked that one. Uh blah, 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 blah. Mm, there, there was someone that I was I was playing around with before. Maybe I didn't like them. I saved them in a playlist. That's right. I put them in my forkable playlist. <laughs> so if we load up the forkable playlist, this uh, this artist um, Savage Joe Wilson seems to be doing really good things here on Band Lab. So let's come and find something of theirs to fork. If we go to their tracks, 
uh, what what looks good here? Uh, weird love waves outside the window. Blue ramble. Let the light shine on. Uh, I, I like the sound of weird love waves. Let's open this project and see. Is this one going to be forkable? No. Oh, man. I wanted to fork that one. Um, the one that I did notice because I played around with that a little bit before was blue ramble, which is pretty cool. And if we open this one up all the way. Come on. Open up. No, I'm not in the right spot. I, I'd started. I, I'd started the fork before. I wanted to show you how we could actually get here from this spot. Maybe I'm in the wrong section here. Uh, no, maybe I need to go to activity because there, there it is. So there you can see that there's a little fork button here. When you're viewing these things in the activity, if they're forkable. It will have fork. Here you go. We can fork weird love waves. All right, let's fork it. So when you fork a track, what it'll do is it'll grab that, it'll add it to your projects, and then open up in the studio, and you can start forking it. Uh, let's see. Can we uh, can we fork a track on the mobile app? I believe so. Yeah. I will. I will go and check afterwards. Uh, Leela says yes, you can. Let, we'll, we'll go fork something on the mobile app after this one. Uh, but how this all works so we've opened it up here and how cool is this we've got this whole project and you know some of the tracks are, are muted out but some of them are there and if we just sort of go to a section here and we play turn the volume up perhaps how cool is that so yeah we can listen into that track get get down with it jam with it and then add to it so we can start adding tracks you can remove tracks you can add effects you can change things you can do whatever you want and then when you save it you can publish that as your inspired song that you've been inspired by that track uh let's let's do what was asked here and jump out and see about forking over on the mobile app because i'm almost positive we can do that as well if we go back to our explore section and we scroll on down <coughs> Now, is there, is there a way to, to search by just forkable tracks, I wonder? That'll be interesting. Let's, um, let's do this by rock. Rock. We'll come into the rock section. Let me get some action from the rock section. Um, if we just open, say, Machine Gun, this will just play it. Machine Gun! Cool. <laughs> um, over here... Uh, yeah, see, this is where I'm not sure what... Let, let's find that same artist that we just were playing around with, which is... Because they definitely have forkable tracks. Just because some people... You, as you as you would have seen, you can choose to either allow forking or be anti-fork. Um, but if we play around with Savage Joe Wilson... So let's search Savage Joe out here. Savage Joe, you're a star. You're, you're our, you're our go-to guy. Savage Joe Wilson... Uh, there he is, there's the user, Savage Joe, and a track that we know that, that, yeah, there you go. So once you're in this view here, the activity view, that's where you can see the fork buttons. And uh, they're there, so I'm assuming if we just fork outside the window, we we'll tap on that one, jump into the studio. Oh yeah, there's video mix too. I've not even touched video mix, but uh, that could be fun to play around with. Uh, every time I open up... Uh, Band Lab, I find something different and something new. Uh, it's it's like the it's like the opposite of Garage Band, where every time I open it up, I'm like, I wish there was something different or something new, but it never seems to happen. So here you go. Yep, we've we've forked this one. It's just this one's just a four track, four track track. Play it. Cool. I like it. Uh, so yeah, so we can, we can go ahead and do that. And again, the cool thing about this is once we've played around with that and done it in the mobile app, it'll bring that back over to our main app. So wherever we are, wherever you are, there you go. Band Lab is with you all the way. So there you go. Um, oh, I got, see, I'm getting hungry now because, um, we've got, uh, we've got bean, bean and kale soup with veggie sausage. Yum. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm going to go and uh, go for a walk and have some lunch shortly because uh, even though it's Tuesday morning, that kind of is my Friday night. So when we finish up this show, that's kind of the end of my work week for a little while. And by end of week, I mean end of live streams. And then I get to go do all the fun stuff like all the uh, 
administration that is required when you have my job. Uh, so we've got a couple of minutes left. If anyone has any final questions or comments, do go and uh, let me know. Yeah, I, I don't know what the video thing is, Tom. I'm going to have to play around with it. Yes, I've got time for one more question, and it's going to come from Treatment in Progress, who says, I have a Scarlet 4i4. When plugged into the iPad, you can't adjust the 4i4 input 3 and 4 like you can on a laptop. I'm looking for a way to input 4 mics with buy ah, any cheap way. Input 4 mics with, buy, with buying 2 preamps. Put 4 mics with buying 2 preamps, any cheap ways. So, I mean, you'll need a, unless you've got like a two-channel preamp or two two-channel preamps to plug into your Scarlet, that's not, uh, that's hard. Um, yeah, look, the, the Scarlet 4i4, because it has that, it doesn't have actual switches to uh, to set your inputs, does it? You have to use the software. I think, is there not an app is there not a, an iOS app that you can get that does it? Let me just see. I'm pretty sure Focusrite, because I, I, I only use the 2i2, but I thought that um, Focusrite, Scar, I thought they had a mobile. Focusrite Control, is that the name of it? I think that there is a mobile app that actually does this stuff. Oop, what am I playing? Oh, I'm playing something in the background. I'll turn that off. Um, I think, <coughs> yeah, is it this one? Mm, not there, here. Yeah, uh, I think it's this app. Is this the official Focusrite? Uh, great feature of the Focusrite. So this is what we're talking about here, where you can actually go in and set up your inputs and outputs. Um, this is the software you have. So I would uh, play around with this. Um, I don't, it looks like it's not a superly high rated app, but... Uh, Disappointing lack of support for the 4i4. <laughs> Wait, is that you? <laughs> is that your comment there, treatment in progress? <laughs> uh, doesn't work on iPad, really. Huh. Yeah, that sucks. Um, no. My only... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, my, uh, by a, by a, by a Steinberg UR44 <laughs> that has actual hardware switches that can sort you out. Oh man, yeah, that that that's rough. Um, no, I don't think so because that that would be my only solution. Because I've I've had this question before from someone, and uh, yeah, they they eventually found and downloaded the Focusrite control app, and it worked for them. But I think they were just using a 2i2 and wanted to set the air settings, which you can't do on the actual thing, or, or something like that, or control phantom power or something. So it worked for them for that. But no, that's that's a bit rough. Um, yeah, look, I, know, I don't want to tell you to go use something completely different, but I must admit, uh, when those focus rights, those new focus rights came out and they had no hardware switches for a lot of the options, it kind of turned me off in a big bad way. They're great interfaces, don't get me wrong, uh, but I actually like the older ones, the old 404s and 202s that have all the switches, and even the Behringer that has all the switches and buttons. Yeah, I don't know. Once you have software control only, it's, uh, yeah... Uh, if so, still a, still a mismatch between line and mic, right? Yeah, so um, if, if you did, if you cranked channel three and four, if you're using a preamp and going into them and it was set to mic and you couldn't switch it to line input, yeah, you're going to get way too much gain and noise. You really need to have a way to get it to line in. Yeah, that sucks because I hate it. I hate it when someone's got a question and I want to be able to say, yes, iPads can do everything. And then they're like, yeah, except this one thing where I plug it in and iPad can't. Ugh. Yeah, it's frustrating. Yet, uh, and I'm, I'm literally looking at my Scarlet over here, and you can hear like, the switches. Click, 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 click. That's me switching between line and mic input on my Scarlet 2i2. And they just, just because they wanted to remove the switches, <sighs> no good. So I'll, I'll ponder it. I'll think about it. If I, if I come up with any brain waves, I'll let you know. And if anyone watching on the replay has uh, has a Focusrite 404 and has uh, experience, then um, please leave a comment. Let uh, let our friends Treatment in Progress know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm far from magical, but I do my best. I try my best, my friend. But uh, thank you. Uh, that is going to do it for, for this show. Now, uh, next week, I did want to just let you know a little bit about next week's show because we got something pretty fun and pretty special coming up for you next week. Uh, one of the viewers of this very channel, by the name of Andy, 
has agreed for me to have a look at his project. In fact, he sent it to me originally and said, I, I can't, can't get the drums right on this one, Johns. And I said, let me have a little squizzle. And I did, and I gave him a few tips and stuff. But then I said, uh, look, if, if, if you want, we got, a, we got a blank topic for next week's Garage Band Weekly. How about we take a squiz? So that's exactly what we'll be doing. We'll be having a look at uh, at Andy's song. And Andy's, um, it's his first song that he's recorded, that he's written and recorded, and it's his first GarageBand project. And he's, he's made the bold move of going off the grid. So we're going to actually be uh, recording some drums and doing some mixing and, and uh, doing a, 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 a few little tweaks there but without the use of the grid in GarageBand, which is kind of like my comfort blanket. So it'll be a, it'll be a stretch and a challenge for me. Uh, and hopefully it'll help out Andy, and hopefully it'll also help any of you that may be starting out with, with a few tips or ideas or things that, that can and can't work. Because GarageBand, is, it's like I always compare it to Texas Hold'em Poker. It's the, it's the app that takes a minute to learn and a lifetime to master. So hopefully uh, that will help out Andy and uh, be interesting for folks to have a look at next week. So uh, you'll be thrown over there straight after this show. So set yourself a reminder, give it a like and uh, like this video too. We had a bit of fun here with BandLab. If you've never dabbled in BandLab, as you can see, it's a, it's a, ma a massive platform with a whole bunch of options there. But you don't have to use it all. But just jump in, have a look, follow me on there. Um, and uh, I'll follow you back if you want to. That's the doorbell, so i got to go. Be kind to yourself, folks. Be kind to others. Keep creating, and I'll see you next time here on Your Studio Live Today.